Hello guys, Hikiami Moriko this and welcome to another indie game. This one's called Midnight on the Milky Way and let's start the game. Because I could not stop for that, he can not stop for me. The courage held but just ourselves. An immorality immortality. Immorality immortality. Alright. We slowly drop, he knew no haste, and I had put away. My labor and my leisure too, for his civility. And I don't know why I'm trying to rhyme this. And we pass the school where children drop at races in the ring. We pass the fields of gazing grain. We pass the... 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 It was. How embarrassing. I can remember unfinished things. Unfinished thing, things, I guess, are the worst. Uh, well, I'm not sure I remember how it ends. I'm sure I remember how it ends. <clears throat> what would you like me to tell you? Well, in the end... It doesn't even matter. Gemini report. The soft chugging of trains wake me up. Something important was being said to me. I can't seem to think of what it was. I have a sweet kiss in my lap and a hat on my head, and I'm sitting in emptiness. And besides that, besides that, uh, it's empty. It's like all of my thoughts have fallen out. This is a special sort of trouble. I must be somebody once. I had to be. How did I end up this way? Where is this train going? I'm a person made of nothing? When chasing my thoughts I only find emptiness too. There is one thing pulling me down to reality. And that is the gentle sound of train tracks. Our zero, a drink with danger. Oh, this, this is really interesting. There's no use sitting and doing nothing. Without much thought, I decided to wander to whatever the next room is. From the inside, I can hear life. That's where I'll find answers, surely. Or drinks. Oh, apple juice. And I juice. Uh, and it looks like to be a bar. It has the sound of clinking glasses and stuff humming. Look at this guy. There sits an impossible devil, bent over his drink. Hey there, fuckface. His voice comes out low and gravelly. He keeps me off the slight scent of smoke. I discovered a new feeling. That feeling is intimidation. Shaking in your boots, how quaint. But there isn't much I can do to fuck face like you, not anymore. Let's have a sit down. How about that? Alright. Ah, what is this? Nothing is coming out. My mouth. My mouth is... My hands up to my face in panic. Nothing, nothing. It's not fear killing my voice. I simply have no mouth at all. It's gone. I have no mouth and I must scream. No nose, no eyes. Everywhere my hands are made emptiness. Now I'll come down there, chickadee. You're in my space, my peace. If I could cry out, I would. I should have the top of my lungs, but it's all gone. What happened to me? Where am I? And who? And now not to you. The man's deep voice rips me out of my panic. He returns to his drink. Now you can sit there, fretting over your pretty little face, twisted, twisting yourself to pieces. Or you could man up and have a drink. It's a perfect night for a, for a genuine conversation. I guess I can make conversation. Not you'll be doing much conversation, conversating. I suppose he has a point. This annoys me greatly. I take a seat next to him in the fit. There we go. We are the only ones in the car, there isn't even a bartender. What luck. Instead of a bartender, it's the devil who slides me a glass of pours. That's some nice acoustic gear. Got this from behind the counter. It don't taste too bad, I'd say. The name's Hoffy, by the way. Hoffy the knife. It says up here. Huffy the knife. Even if I could respond, I realize I haven't got anything to respond with. Because even my name's gone. Gemini report. I look down into my drink. Looking back at me is a dark fog. That's me. Ah, oh, that's why I'm a fuckface. This train, do you know how you got in on it? I weakly shake my head. Hmm, maybe you're lucky for getting so easy. Not everyone gets that luxury. But by your stance of looks, you seem like you got some good things to go back to. My stop is coming in due time. 
If you don't mind, I'd like to do some conversation. Conversating. Yeah, sure. The devil clears take slowly from his glass. No, I don't want to be so self-appreciative, but I say I can read people pretty right. When I see a fuckface like you, I see somebody who gets muddy too fast. That's not good, especially where I'm from. Where I'm from, it's best not to think too hard about nothing. But I'm bad at following my own rules, fuckface. Maybe that's why we are sharing a drink like this. If that's the case, I got lucky after all. You must not remember how you got here, but I do. I was finishing up some work, the kind that's supposed to go down easy. I'm guessing I'm dead, right? Boss giving me the picture that you have was some guy who was your head, but skinnier. I, I says, you got me clipping a bookworm? I guess he was clever with money in some way, casting some outside with the fellows in high places. Nothing to worry about, of course, because by looking at him, I could just be getting drinks before dark. So you're uh, like a killer, right? Uh, so I head out into town, thinking how I'm going to do this. The snow was clean and crisp, so it meant for good thinking. A guy that both don't have the muscle to fight back, but he sure do got the brains. If I was him, with all those smarts and all that money, I'd make sure my back was being watched. I'd get a few guys, I'd keep a cut on me. It was gonna be a good night, I felt. He wasn't so hard to find. He looked like a coat rack running around in that new suit he must have bought with the stupid cash. If he didn't get so greedy for that suit, maybe we'll waste it like we did. What's it like we did? Uh, although I was plenty alright with Wilson. I got right into his trap. I sometimes like to do that, just to get myself giddy. I knew that he was at the back of the alley. And there'd be two guys behind me, and we have a real good wall just for the fun of it. It's a cliche, but I'm a romantic. And the skinny fella will let me to this wonderful night? Why? I would give him a sloppy kiss on the lips for showing me such a good time. What? You won't get it. You're a stand-up guy. It's better if you don't. But there was a day back then that I learned to... I learned to find joy in what I do. I could hear the sweet sound of knives coming on the sheets behind me. That only got me more excited. You can help a thing. Are they gonna swing or step? Is the blade newly sharpened or has it got the wear on it? Are they the calculating sword or are they the full of fire? How long will this moment be? When you see the fight in the other man's eyes, there will be something to savor. I pushed my blade right into the side of the first ground, it goes easy, like it's hot troop butter. He goes down in time for the other, just in time for the other fellow to jump out, swinging some iron pipe. I take that pipe and what? Crack. He sent flying into the frost. It got my blood going, but it was nothing too bad. Just, just wasn't good enough. You see, there was no passion. And then I turn around. It was the skinny fella I was sent to ship off. I'm afraid of weakness of mine is that I'm not too keen with faces. I'm better at seeing people with how they carry themselves. And this coat rack, well, I won't remember his face. Brushel helped remember his quick step and the hot feeling in my chest when his knife pierced it through. When you see a man's eyes and you see the fight in them, you can tell if they are fighting for their life or if they're fighting for something else, these were the eyes of someone who didn't care for his life. He was fighting because he liked it. I took my own knife, slick with blood, and gave him a good thrust to the side. As much as Parkas he had, he couldn't keep him standing, so I watched him gasp like a fish in the snow. Oh, sorry. Yeah, let's overwrite that. I could not anything. Maybe I'll be clean-cut fella in another life, or maybe I'll go back into the dirty business. But as I think, no matter how many times I get reborn, I remember the, the head I fell when that coat rack of front stuck me a good one in the heart. Sounds strange. In a line of business where you shouldn't be thinking these things, but it felt like I was coming home. And one way or another, I was on this train. So yeah, we, we are dead, right? I know it don't make much sense, but that's the way things happened. I'm at a loss for words. The man I'm drinking with is dangerous. The overwhelming urge to run takes me. 
I don't accept a do-gooder like you to get it. For you people, your life is a lot good for you. I didn't try to get into this business. More like the business got into me. Some folks, we don't get to start off so clean. That's alright for face, I can read you plenty fine. You won't have to stay with me much longer. Huffy puts down his drink. I think this is where I'll be living. No worries, I won't ask you for another round. I'm not that soft. This line of business don't have much in the ways of close relations. I'll give you a person. Carefully, Huffy rolls his mask and places it on the bar counter. But he turns too quick for me to see. Since I'm here, maybe I'll turn over a new leaf. Think of that, Huffy getting clean cut. If you're lucky, we won't meet again. Huffy walks away. I haven't touched my drink at all. I don't think I could drink, even if I still had a mouth. But it's strange. Even though I'm shaking, even though he smells like smoke, I think. No, it couldn't be. I get up from the bar. I need to find out where am I, where I am. And as much as I feel like I should, I take the mask I left behind. I don't have any regrets, he said, and he left me this. I walk out of the empty bar with hurried steps. The rooms I find are empty of life. The only sounds louder than my thoughts are rhythmic shocking of the train and my own panic footsteps. The sensation in my chest grows stronger. Anybody, anybody, I just want to... That's it. Thank God, there's somebody here. I open the door and a figure appears before me. A young man with a knowing grin. I can tell him not comfortable or suspicious. Can you speak? I don't know. I couldn't say... I'm cut off by my own surprise, just before I could make a peep. But now there's sound. Without ever thinking, I put a hand to the mask and give a sharp whistle. My ears are made with sound and my fingers felt warm by it. The mask Huffy gave me. That's good. It would be trouble if I couldn't. If you couldn't. Most passengers do have a lot to say. You look like you have a lot to say as well. I'll have you however I can. Uh, what happened to my memory? Everyone is a bit forgetful in the beginning. It's only natural. Because the shock of the situation is too much for one person to process. Yeah, we are dead, right? Normally, one will be getting some flickers about now. He forces his burning dips. So I can't help but feel awkward. Waiting for this child to help me. He breaks the silence with a weary sight. I'm sorry. This is something for you to find. Please understand. Gah. I can't hide my disappointment. Talking to more people may help. <sighs> uh, who are you? I'm a passenger like the rest, but I've been riding longer than most. You can call me Shaheen. Shaheen Fortune Boy. I'm about to offer my own name when my mind goes blank. I've forgotten that. Something so important. It's gone. Shaheen answers my hesitation with an understanding smile. Please trust me when I say it gets better. Uh, who are you? Oh, I already asked that, right? Yes, sorry. Uh, what do you mean by passengers? Well, we are on a train, so naturally we'll have passengers. Uh -huh. I know what you mean. What do you mean? Everyone here has their own circumstances. Dealing with things just as you are. Even the devil fellow, if you can believe that. I'm reminded of the clear gruesome story. The strange feeling comes crawling back. I push it away. Please be kind to them, even if they are not so kind to you. Alright, so, um... What about this train? Aha, uh -huh, I too wonder about this train. I can't tell you much. Have you looked outside yet? The beast, unlike anything. Other than that, I won't worry. Just keep your ticket close. So, uh, I don't remember any ticket. It's surely a new person. Take some time. That case there. A case. I've got a suitcase. For some reason, I can recall anything that's inside. My name, a suitcase. 
I even got here. Shaheen's face goes unexpectedly slim. Take care of your ticket. You'll find many I could sell on these tracks, but there are cruel ones as well. I grab the suitcase even tighter. Uh, that's, that's all. Somehow I feel like I learned nothing at all. He's young and polite, but he still irritates me, dancing around the subject like that. Still, his sincerity is there. He must have his reasons. You look unsatisfied. I understand. I've been there, being looked away with no clear path. And the more you look, the more you realize you are completely utterly lost. Do you think you will find what you're looking for? I don't know. I see. Well, that is realistic. If you talk to some people, it might give you your direction. I feel silly just saying that, as if I know what to do myself. Please excuse me. Shaheen Slaughter comes out bitter. For now at least, rest easy. I don't trust this guy. It can be very stressful, coming to terms with all this. This unfamiliar place alone. But please don't worry, just enjoy yourself while you can. And with that, he makes the movement to leave. Will I see you again? At my fervent question, Shaheen lights up with laughter. Ha, huh, you sound like a child there. Or some lost lover. If I had a face, it would be turning the brightest shade of crimson. Ah, uh, well, dear lover, I'm afraid you got my own. I got my own affairs. Please understand, you're very entertaining. It's just some things must be done by yourself. But I'll see you when I can, alright? Ah, for some reason my chest hurts. Shaheen gives me warmer glances of his condolences and disappears into the next car. Goodbye, Shaheen. Somehow it hurts. I feel compelled to rush after him, begging for a little more time. But that's just embarrassing. Even as the chase pants grows, it will be too childish. The thought of drinking with that killer isn't so unattractive suddenly. Anybody, really. A flash from the car window captures my interest. I hadn't turned to look outside yet, but there I see it. Through the window is the vast expanse of stars. The darkness goes even light light pass, too fast to grasp. Space. This is what space looks like. And stabbing my chest I know that too. It's loneliness. Hour 1. Bright pearls for my darling. And someone crying. For a time, all I could do was take in the scene. The sinking feeling of being small, of being trapped. It was all too strange to absorb. I went numb with the shock. What realistically can I do? All the way out here, we had a face or a name. In. <laughs> that sounds so stupid, I exclaim. So when my chest put out, I began to explore the cars as I came across them. Each car was filled with empty seats of simple construction, the only real impressiveness coming from the large windows that revealed the stars outside. Slowly sliding, I drew the cat side of small planets surrounding my golden rings. Occasionally, there will be something that I couldn't make sense of, like the sight of a seabird or a school of fish going by. It's too impossible. However, I've never been to space until I just now. So maybe fish and birds are things of that sort, are completely common occurrences. What a lovely sight. Yes, it's like nothing else. But even as I stopped to stare in wonder, even as I kept my chin held high, it didn't help the beating pain caught me with my ribs. My disappointment led me to taking a seat by one of the windows. Out of curiosity, I pressed my ear to the glass. A small tinkling sound, as if the stars themselves were clinging against each other. Maybe that's just a way of conversation. If I close my eyes and focus enough, maybe I can catch a few words. Maybe I can understand what they are saying. Maybe I'll learn something. Tch. We got a real bomb on our pals. And it's a cat. Welcome aboard the Gemini 22, Well, passengers. You've been catnapping for a while. I'm your devoted attendant, Doppler. Doppler the Necoman. It's a cat. A real true talking cat. He's wearing some kind of clean cut uniform, not a whisker out of place. Well, if it's a uniform, then it's certainly from this Gemini 22 thing. What is it, passenger? It's rude to stare. Ah, uh, sorry. You see, Doppler, I have seen another person in some time. I'm a bit confused. 
Oh, so I take it you're trying to sniff out some answers, huh? That's just it. And you want me to help you? <laughs> Why is he talking like that? I nod feverishly. Feverishly. His wordplay is grating, but the prospect of hell gets me excited like a puppy. The catman gives me a town smile. I see. Sure sucks to be meow. Yeah. You see, valued passenger, it's not really anything on my business. Maybe I'm your better attendant, but I'm sure as hell I'm your friend. Alright, what's with that face? I'm just here to check for for tickets and whatnot. Oh, but me got your ticket, per. I feel the urge to slam my suitcase over the smoke Fallen's head. Instead, I exercise strain and open it for the first time. Well, at least that I can remember. Luckily, the first thing I see is a chain of silver ticket. It's cold to the touch and surprisingly weighty. I hope to find a name, but the only thing I can read are the words Gemini 22 one way. The rest is foreign to me. Gee, passenger, you sure are taking your time. I'm just making sure it is, alright. Well, passenger, it will be a silver curl, which is like shiny gray. I know larger than a few inches. Shush up, I know. Here it is. I shove the ticket at the smug beast and he gives me a proper hole punch. Oh, this is perfectly fine. He hands it back after he takes an extensive look. I slip it quickly back into my suitcase. Say, Doppler, what will happen if I were to lose my ticket? Why am I planning on it? No, I just don't know how things were around here, that's all. Sure, sure. His face stays just as, as smiley, but his eyes feel like they are boring to me. Well, to put it lightly, you'd be in a world of hell. Alright, I, I gotta make sure not to lose my ticket then. Well, you can read it to stop with a ticket part, right? Yeah. I can tell if he's joking or not. Either way, this girl really puts me off. I already spent way too much time here. I jumped to job, yep. Look after your ticket, meow. And so the fiend peters away. When Shaheen said that there will be cruel souls on this railway, he really meant it. Still seeing another person, this is my pain just a bit. Oh, the suitcase. That's right, I hadn't really looked at it through. Hopefully I'll find something that jacks my memory. Um, let's see the specs. Won't you look at that, a pair of gold remote specs. Well, it's not real gold, and the construction is a bit flimsy. From this, it's only those that I had weak vision and had a bit weaker bank account. Nothing else comes to mind. The postcard. Greetings from Orpheus Bay. This, it's sure to tell me something. Except the postcard is completely blank. Apparently, I was too busy to read anything yet. So frustrating. The front of the car has a pleasant photo of the ocean. Unfortunately, nothing specific comes to mind. Ons, this must be lovely. No, they are dead. When you pluck a flower, no matter what, it will not wilting. I can't imagine what or who they were once for. For for me, right? And rings. A pair of wearing rings. They feel impossibly heavy in my hands. These are made of real silver. How much did they cost me? I can for the life of me remember. Even worse, I can't remember who they are for. A wave of misery washes over me. There is someone on the train how to do with these rings. I can feel it. These were so important. But when I try to dig deeper, my throat begins to close up. That's enough for now. So all these things looks like things they will put on a grape, right? Like my wife will put the rings, some flowers, the postcard for a vacation we went, and, and my favorite specs, right? And the silver ticket, and that's all for now. I'll let the case shut again. Yet again, I didn't learn anything new. In fact, I feel it most worse than before. I check uh, such frustration. I wish I knew just one small thing for certain. <laughs> What's this? I was so lost in my toe I failed to notice that a small watery eight creature has snuck up to me. A rabbit of all things. They stand blankly staring with their red rimmed eyes. Um, are you lost? 
They simply keep staring. Is your mom here? Is something on my fa her mask? Sure. Are you cheerful? Hmm, I didn't mean my spirits are on that height. Not yeah, sure. Cheerful as in you crying cheers. Tearful? Oh, it's hard to understand this guy. I see now. The short is asking me if I was crying tears, if I was tearful. What a strange question. I don't think I could even if I wanted to. Not with this foggy face. I'm not sure what you're referring to. I'm just fine. But sure, how are you sure? Are you, you here was cheerful? Hey, I keep hearing cheers, so I want to see. That's something I don't know how to respond to. Maybe my heart really was in tears. Hey, I see you. How have you not done yet? Suddenly, the child bursts into powerful tears. I'm sorry, Shir. I you sure with sadness. Uh, it's quite all right. Now I wish to hear about tears. Emotion, emotion. <laughs> this is hard to read. Uh, I think you mean emasculating, dear. Emasculating. I wish I were giving school, Shir. I'm sorry. Let's come down. It's all right. My hair was crying, all right? It was tearful. Finally, she hears me out. Is she great anymore? We have to swim through the, the cars. That's all right, Shir. I am to have a shift sometimes. She pats my knee to comfort me. Thank you very much. Oh, this is nice. The name's Billy. You are welcome. Billy the rabbit child. Oh, this, this is cute. This is nice. What a well-mannered kid. Even if she's a bit eccentric. Nice to meet you, Billy. I thought I'd give you my name, but I'm afraid I don't remember what it is. You don't remember, sir? What a tragedy. <laughs> a terrible tragedy, certainly. So I'm trying to find something to make me remember. Oh, I'm looking for something too, my precious thing. Oh well, what is it? I can help but feel infected with her sudden excitement. This will be at least a nice distraction. Uh, let's see. Is it true? It's precious ash pie. We should have this perilous jiha. Pearls? Like from the ocean? Aye, pearls! And then... I got on this train here. And I didn't have the precious thing anymore. Oh no, this, this is totally sad. What works again? Billy, don't worry, we'll find it. We will? Absolutely. It has to be around someplace, right? Sure. So brave. I actually have no clue how I'm going to find those pearls. But now she sees me as so brave. I have no choice but to deliver. Why don't we get looking for them? Many hand make light work. Aye, aye, Shir. Your work be lost, Shir. I shoot up my suitcase in one hand and build a spell in the other, and away we go. This is a really well written game. I mean, it has some typos, but I mean, that this, this story is really nice. I have no idea what we are doing. Maybe the pearls are the tears. Sure, are you resting there? I got myself stuck it halfway under one of the tables of the tearing cars. The rear of Inga. Just in the bar, there's nobody minding the place. That means we can search every place as we please. Except. I'm sorry, Billy, there's nothing but carpet under this thing. Sure, no need for choice. I can see you putting your whole shoulder into it. I appreciate the appreciate the appreciation, dear. More searching that leads to nothing. The furnishings of this place are woefully fully outdated and worn with films of those blanketing entire rooms. Furthermore, the construction is just confusing. Walking from one car to another is a linear fashion feels somehow labyrinthian with the repeating cars. And when they don't repeat, they seem to be a lot farther somehow. Say, Billy, if you had a bar and a tinning car, wouldn't it make sense to put them together? If people were looking for a proper drink, they have a meal first and they head to the next car. Placing them too far apart seems like a bad business decision. Whoever bought this place must be halfway silly. I pulled myself for, out from under the table with a sigh. If I were to have a drink, I want to walk off super first. Well, that's a peculiar line of logic indeed. Sure, so you just don't understand. Damage must keep a fig. A fig? No reason why you couldn't keep one even if the bar was next car. Although I didn't see any fix stuck in the cabinets here. Sure, you're acting chilly. Fig as in dark glassness of water. 
too wet to tell you guys. Oh, I can't understand almost anything, uh, but that's nice. Ah, fish here. Hey, how did a little kid like you learn to speak so indecently? Clever observation here, too wit. I would like to give her parents at Lockington, except they probably aren't here. Billy, are your parents on the train? No, they be off shelling most like it. You mean you don't know for sure? Sure, I prefer them to be shedding than joining me. I shouldn't judge family matters like this. It's rude to intervene. Yeah, we are all that, right? But I can help but feel concerned. Hmm. There's a clear ringing. Again. I hear it coming from the last car. But we already went to the last car and it was empty. Brett overtakes both of us. Me here is this. Uh, no, calm down there. I'm sure it's just an additional hallucination. Yes, an obligatory hallucination. <laughs> of course. And we just consent to leave at the same time. Of course, we should need to be conscious. Oh no. Shit, I'm fearing for me, soul. It's fine, it's fine. I really don't know if it's exactly fine, but I feel like the right thing to say. I'll go check things out. Can you stay here for me? Hey, we'll wear the helm mesh with my left shirt. I saw the brave soldier. Let's go. With a pounding heart, I marched valiantly to my dome. No, don't go thinking like that. That's too masochistic. It'll be fine, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be. There's nobody there. Everything is as we left it. Even the dust settling on the empty seat lies undisturbed. I can tell if I'm half mad and doubly lonely at this point. There's again. No, that was real. A sudden wave of chills comes over me as the car turns somehow. Hello? Can anybody hear me? I'm answering in the most peculiar fashion. Oh my god. The car is no longer empty. Out of nowhere they simply appear, like phantoms. With some hesitation I approach one of the figures. Gemini reports. Excuse me, do you happen to? The person I'm speaking to is something like a translucent shadow, flickering like a candle in gentle wind. They don't acknowledge me at all, or at least not in a way that I can recognize. Can you hear me? No response. I wave my hand and say hello, but it seems to be another word entirely. Aha, they won't be able to talk for some time, please understand. I know that polite voice anywhere. It's this guy, Shaheen. You were just like this when you first entered this train. It's the way of things. Well, that's a strange way to enter a train. A strange way is suitable for a strange train, isn't it? That makes sense, in its own nonsensical way. Oh, that's just right. This kid knows more about this place than I do. So if anyone will be seeing Billy's treasure, it will be him. Say, Shaheen, have you seen any, uh, pearls? Oh, plenty. That was easier than I thought. That's fantastic. Where'd you find them? I didn't find them myself. Rather, I tried for them when Americans came to town. Apparently, it's a popular practice in southern regions. I suppose I did find a few myself, but they, hate, they were of hardly any quality. I should know. I hate this guy. Yeah, of course it was too good to be true. That's what I get for not being specific. Any reason for the question? I'm actually looking for specific pearls. Specifically, as you see, it has some typos, but um, the story is really interesting. And they are supposed to be on this train. A friend of mine, well, they're important to her, so I was hoping. Ah, that's much clearer now. Pearls on this train. Hmm. We will dive into detail. I apologize, I haven't seen anything like that here. No need for apologies. I tried looking for them myself. Uh, have you had any hands on your memory yet? Honestly, I was hoping he would bring that up again. But it has been such a great distraction. I almost forgotten the pain in my chest. I feel so disheartened. No, not yet. I searched my case just as you said, and nothing solid came to mind. It's like I'm playing games with myself. I can't seem to win. 
That's struggling. I don't know how to help you in this case. But you have some time, so don't worry about too much. It will come eventually, not naturally. Uh, now I just feel like he's trying to make me feel better. How do I always end up being the child? Ah, I now have a present that might help you. He produces a set of silver inlayed cards from his pocket. They have dazzling amount of gender patterns. It's time. You want to play Old Maid? Haha, <laughs> Old Maid, that's right. They are for fortune telling. It's a skill that helps when you don't know what to do. I was about to say, I don't believe in the ridiculous stuff. But as I am on the train in the middle of the space, I would hold my statement. Shaheen pushes a stack of cards to me. Go ahead, take one. And no looking. Might as well try it. Ooh, a choice. Uh, I want the... The middle card. Feeling a bit obnoxious, I struggle to slay one of the middle. Nice. Exactly the card I wanted. Shaheen swipes the card away quickly. I told you not to look. It sells the fortune when you do. Shaheen, what was this card just now? Please understand. We are not interpreting it correctly. It's quite scary looking, isn't it? But it simply means the end of things. For example, the end of your search. Are we bothering the other passengers? Or the end of this conversation? I'll find you another time. And just like that, he ducks away. How does he move so fast? And here's the damn cat. What were you doing here, valued passenger? I was uh, enjoying the fine company of these good people. Isn't that right, Miss Lady? The shadow next to me does not respond. I better not hear you casting any trouble from here on out. It's that clear? Um, yes, sir. Damn you, valued passenger. And he finally leaves. I am about to find him from here. That has such an intense way about him. He could learn some consideration from a certain somebody. <gasps> Billy! I will be so to her that there's nothing to worry about after all. Billy, I hope you're okay. Billy! Billy! Um, this is... Billy isn't here. Neither is my suitcase. Oh no! Billy, are we playing hide and seek? No, my suitcase! Why, why I left it? I I'm dead. I check on our tables, throw the cabinets and back on our tables again. I'm beginning to panic. She's really gone. Did she run away herself? Is she okay? I have my suitcase. My suitcase has a silver ticket. The thing I'm supposed to protect no matter what. Uh, yeah, where did it go wrong? Just when I feel I'm about to lose it, I spot something at the center of the floor. A dark feeling climbs into my chest and stays there. Shaheen, he told me. You'll find many a good soul in these tracks. But there are cruel ones as well. A black spot. It's a pool of soot. And it only trails all the way up their ceiling and into a cracking in the walls. Hello, valued passenger. There are still two more chapters to this story. I'm sure you like to see them. Maybe I'm simply making assumptions and finished things are the worst, so I always like to see how things end up. But hopefully you enjoyed it until now. Please watch this game patently for the next update. All sorts of crazy revelations of the highly emotional source are bound to happen. How passionate, how spicy. Until then, keep your ticket safe. Farewell. Okay, that, that was a that was a sudden finish to the game. Uh, I know it's not finished, but uh, I mean, yeah, I was. It's a it's a big cliffhanger, right? Uh, now I want to know what happened to Billy. It was so nice having Billy by my side. And I lost my ticket too. So, uh, well, I guess that was um, Midnight on the Milky Way. Uh, uh, that's me, right? I think this guy is me. Uh, such a nice visual novel, right? Um, it has some typos here and there, but everything else is just nice. Uh, the characters are interesting. The this, this story is so interesting. I, I really like this story. Like, I know um, characters, uh, main characters that don't have a memory, it's kind of a cliche, but here works so well. It, it, it works well here in this game. And I hate the cat. I love Billy. I hope she's safe. I want to protect Billy. So um, I hope this game updates someday. 
ever and because I want to play what happens next and um, well that's all if you want to play this game and the link will be down in the description and I will see you in the next game goodbye